Hardball detective fiction started in the popes. These inexpensive magazines were printed on cheap pulp paper, sold for a dime, hence the name. As a result, this entire genre historically catered mostly to an American working class audience, one that was longing for tales that could strengthen their belief in the American dream. A time where helplessness dictated daily life, because as the middle class rose and prospered, the lives of blue collar workers were made worse. <laughs> As a result, as scholar Zapka summarized, the common American was being victimized by America's most successful exemplars of self-empowerment. My original idea was to make Beta set more deliberately in the 1940s, not just a 40-ish world like Tim Burton did. I'd really love to have seen it with rotary phones and no computers and all that stuff. The original Batman the Animated Series was not what Bruce Tim pitched, it morphed into something else. Then in May 2021, Batman Cape Crusader was announced, as the collaborative result of Bruce Tim, James Tucker, Matt Reeves and J.J. Abrams, a man who was paid $250 million five years ago. Batman Cape Crusader is about resurrecting BTAS's original vision, a back-to-basics low-tech interpretation where mystery is more important than spectacle. And instead of featuring a wide range of tones, ranging from the colorful to the noir, the show is tightly focused on a hard-boiled, pulpy vision. It's very committed to speaking, to a feeling of being on your own, since the powers above don't care. Spoilers, even though it's been out for a while. Gotham City is not what it seems. Get this, it's corrupt. While also, Batman, get this, learns to be more in touch with his humanity and begins to work with other people. There's an extremely familiar framework to the show. However, what gives it flavor is how it's so unrelentingly focused on corruption and inequality. Pretty much every aspect of the show is steered around the rich versus the poor. Catwoman is now a rich bitch. Harley Quinn is reimagined as a Robin Hood figure. Lucius Fox is buying property to create low income housing. Gentleman Go steals from the poor and gives it to the rich, namely himself. Latest reports indicate that inflation and unemployment in Gotham continue to rise. You're hit with constant details like TVs are always talking about unemployment. When Two Face is in Arkham, he resists getting special treatment as the XDA, since that's not justice, it's not fair. Does a guy like that deserve leniency? Furthermore, in contrast with the more idealistic versions of Gotham and BTAS, or even the Dark Knight trilogy to an extent, corruption and injustice is not something that can be beaten. It's unchanging and hopelessly normal. To fit truly into hard-boiled fiction, Cape Crusader had to discard any idea that society is worth saving. Instead, it's at the verge of disintegration. The character who most visibly anchors this is Bullock. He's not a grumpy, good-hearted detective who's loyal to Jim. What are you looking at? Your hair. He's now completely rotten, but is still a main cast member. As a result, his presence actively reminds you just how compromised this world is compared to BTAS. There's no certainty that the system is trustworthy. Instead, you arguably feel defeated by how corruption is actively more dependable. So you just have to coexist and work around it. You should have stayed smart and played along with Boss Thorn. However, since corruption is a natural part of the world, a greater question rises. What is the purpose of pursuing good and evil when the world itself is made of compromises? And how do we hold ourselves accountable when we too need to compromise ourselves in order to get things done? The two characters who have the most faith in the system fails to stay true to it. Harvey's dream of cleaning up the corruption as mayor is compromised when he had to shake hands with Rupert Thorne to keep his campaign alive. Jim Gordon tries to clean GCPD, but he can't even trust his own men and has to accept Batman as an ally. Furthermore, because the system is so rotten, whoever replaces them, even if it's another idealist, they're gonna be inevitably compromised too. So this is the big plan? You protect me long enough that I can testify against Thorne in half of City Hall and then what? You expect that to change anything? Yes, I do. Furthermore, even a character like Barbara, who is reinterpreted as an attorney, who's devoted herself to helping low-level criminals, ensuring they get lighter sentences. They're good cops. I know these two. Sure, maybe they made some mistakes, but... Oh, so cops can make mistakes, but citizens can't. You're being naive. And you're a cynic. She almost gets whacked by one of her own clients for failing to keep him out of prison. However, she doesn't break or change. And that's the show's answer. Where golden age detective fiction, like, you know, your Sherlock Holmes, is about straightening out problems in society, its various anomalies, the hard-boiled fiction is about existing in a society so beyond repair that personal integrity in the face of repeated temptations and deceptions, that's what matters. As scholar Kolmitzer argued, 
Golden Age detective fiction sought to soothe the feelings of confusion and loneliness of the post-World War I era. Hard-boiled fiction followed a different course to address the problems of the age and hence provided a different solution. A return to a stable and secure society is not possible as there simply is no security in the world. This is a losing battle. The four of you can't hold back the tide. I don't care. You will testify, Dent because you don't bend with the world when it goes bad. You push back. This philosophy is what differs Batman from everyone. He's not here to compensate the shortcomings of Gotham's justice system or act as a member of the city's community. Bruce is the orphanage's most generous donor. Really? Hell of a tax write-off. He's acting entirely as an individual. The hard-boiled detective doesn't have companions like Golden Age detectives. You know, your Dr. Watson or Captain Arthur Hastings. The situation's escalating and you're wasting my time, Pennyworth! Hard-boiled Batman is a lonely cowboy walking into a mess. He can't change the world, but he can intervene on a small scale. So rich or poor, ghostly or not, he obsessively and coldly punishes to bring about justice. However, in hard-boiled fiction, the detective and the vigilante are two distinctly different archetypes. The detective and their use of violence is strictly governed by his code, whereas the vigilante seeks mostly justice for himself and therefore only really cares for himself. This individualism is presented through how ambition without humanity is what drew Bruce to Harvey. Both men are passionate about justice to the point of never quitting. Both pretend in public. Both will do anything to achieve their goals. And there's literally a moment where a bit of Batman spills out of Bruce in the same way Two-Face spills out of Harvey. Don't start growing a conscience now, Dent. Just help yourself, that's all I'm saying. However, the lack of clear code is what led to Harvey's downfall and is what caused Bruce to push Harvey over the edge as he interrogated him during his period of recovery. I saw something in him when he went over the edge. Something that reminded you of yourself. I'm going to make them pay. And you're going to help me. Listen to me, sir. Harvey Dent was twisted by ambition. He lost sight of his own humanity. That isn't you. You're still inside there, Master Bruce. I see it more and more, all the time. You've even made friends, in your own way. Four of us against an endless tide. Dent was right. Those are terrible odds, but I'll take them. What we witness in Batman's journey is a change in attitude, so he shifts in archetypes away from the vigilante and away from the detective to an extent. He opens himself to Alfred, he allows a community to build around him, and he admits his mistake with Harvey. He's no longer isolated, bringing justice purely through violence, he's instead open to reform and community building. And perhaps by being someone new in this hard-boiled universe, the rules of the world can change. There can be more than partial redemption. Or perhaps not. This season has established itself as an adaptation that's not really committed to the traditional Batman mythology. Penguin can be a woman, Harvey can die, and Batman doesn't have a massive computer screen. So if they stay in the depressing, unresolvable realm of the pulp, I'd argue there's still something satisfying about that too. There's harmony. How the corruption presented here could have been avoided if everyone had access to chicken wings. You can peel the skin off, you can have a crunchy texture, then have some soft chicken meat underneath. Just imagine Batman eating a chicken wing or throwing one at Rupert Thorne. You've been a thorn in my side, but now have some wings. Holy cow, Batman. Or holy chicken. You're right, with chicken wings, I understand crime is wrong, because what am I in this horrible corrupt city, if not grease in the wind? Excellent, dude! Whoa! So here is the Cape Crusader video. I was gonna make it ages ago, but I kinda need to sit on it because I made like three videos in a row of newly released stuff a couple months ago, and I just sort of needed a, a, a nice break from just constantly watching a new program. I need to watch some, some, uh, you know, some, some boys of the flowers, you know?
Say 